Hey everybody, today I'm going to be showing you how to make a magnetically bound state, how to lock a magnet in space without using a superconductor. So previously I showed you an experiment where I used a type 2 superconductor and I cooled it down really cold and then exposed it to a strong magnetic field. And in that demonstration what happened is you can actually lock the type 2 superconductor in space. So it doesn't completely get attracted and doesn't get repelled, but it locks it wherever you put it. Now this experiment in and of itself is pretty amazing. If you have a homogeneous magnetic field, it can glide through it like nothing. Or if you have an inhomogeneous magnetic field, it gets locked exactly where it is. Now the ability to float something in place without any attachments to it is pretty amazing. It has implications for levitating cars and technology of the future. But the problem is, it requires a type 2 superconductor and they're super expensive to make and also they require it to be at liquid nitrogen temperatures which is really cold and extremely energy and efficient to keep it that cold but what if there is a way to achieve the same levitation effect without superconductors well it turns out there's a way to actually do this due to a little known effect called polarity free magnetic repulsion so normally if you want to keep one magnet levitating on top of another one, you have to constrain it in one of its degrees of freedom. But what if it were possible to just have both of these magnets free in the air and stick one on top of the other and just have it sit there like that? Well, it turns out you can actually do this if one of these is rotating extremely fast. So let me show you how it's possible to achieve stable levitation. Let's take these two magnets for example. I've taped the top of each of these representing where the North Pole is on each of these. So normally the North Pole is attracted to the South Pole. So they'll want to stick together like this or like this. Either one of these is stable. So it's going to want to twist in my hand and flip the opposite direction. But in order to spin, this has some moment of inertia, meaning it takes a little bit of time to actually spin depending on its mass. So if you can actually drive one magnet to spin in one direction at the right frequency where it's just out of phase with a different magnet, you can actually get them to be just out of phase with each other where they stay repulsed from each other. So there's a repulsive force between them. But then if you tilt one of these slightly, it will have an attractive force still, so it still wants to come down to it. So if you can get the spinning phase just right, and the tilt just right, you should be able to have a stable equilibrium point where it holds it locked in place with the other magnet. For example, if you look at this drawing here, let's say the north pole is facing up, and so the, the bottom part is the south pole. And then the rotating part in the bottom is actually a magnet that has the north pole on the equator and the south pole on the other side of that. So the north pole is marked by that little dot that's spinning around. So the upper magnet is moving in such a way that the south pole is looking downward, but it deviates off of the north pole of the spherical magnet. But the magnetic torque tries to align them. So the driving frequency is above the natural frequency of the system. In this cartoon here, the natural frequency is one order lower than the driving frequency. So this results in a Z-force component that is basically a repulsive force. But the slight tilt provides a Z-component attraction of the upper magnet to balance out the repulsion effect. So what this means is that due to this spinning magnet and the slight tilt, you can actually get a stable equilibrium that locks that upper magnet in place. Now it seems like this would be really hard to do, but it's actually not. You can actually get this right pretty easily by just having a rotating tool, sticking a magnet to the top of it, and then bringing it close to another magnet. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to glue my magnet onto the Dremel such that the north and south pole are pointing in this direction. So you want north and south to be in this direction. And you have to turn it up really fast. For this Dremel here, which is a Dremel 3000, it's around the marker of eight here. So let's see if I can actually get this to work. It lifted up, look, it's locked in place. That is so cool. 
Let's see if I can turn it sideways. No way. That is amazing. Oh, it worked. It was locked in place just like the superconductor. Okay, now this is pretty amazing. What we've created here is basically a novel repulsive force. So it's a repulsive force that acts only at short distances. From far away, the attractive force dominates, but as it gets really close, the repulsive force starts to dominate. And so they balance each other out at some stable equilibrium point that locks the magnet in place. And so what we've done here is basically create levitation that is stable. Now one note, in order to get this to work well, you need to provide some damping to the magnet that's going to become the floater. Now one way to do this is to put it in water or something because in that way, as it starts to vibrate when you get closer to it and flip different directions, the water will damp it so it doesn't turn so much and you can get it stable and then pick it up until it gets to its stable equilibrium and then it's locked in place. One cool method that was suggested to me was that I just use a copper or aluminum chunk like this. So on this aluminum chunk, the magnets don't want to move very fast because they create eddy currents in the aluminum that slow it down. So it can't vibrate as freely as it would if it were just lying on the table. So it's much easier to lock it into its stable equilibrium if you put it on a chunk of aluminum. So you can see that if I just set the magnet on the table and try to pick it up, it's a lot harder to do. Eventually I am able to get it, but it's not very easy. Now you can show this effect in a much more precise way by using a rotating drum that has magnets in it. These videos are from a man named Hamdi Yukar, and he basically has devoted the last five years of his life in studying this effect. What's really interesting about this is it's not very well known in literature, and he wrote a really good research paper documenting his entire research in the field and mathematically proving how the effect works showing the different frequencies that you need depending on the weights of the magnets. He wrote a paper completely describing this effect and to my knowledge it's the only paper that I know of that describes this. I'll put a link to his paper in my description, it's pretty amazing. You can achieve levitation almost as far away as 7 centimeters. And thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. And also hit the bell so that you can be notified when I release my latest video. And check out theactionlab.com if you haven't seen it yet. You can get the Action Lab experiment boxes or the Action Lab experiment book. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.